Welcome to Lockdown Anatomy. In this video, I will be taking you through the muscles of the thigh, the three compartments in the thigh. And once again, I'm using the fantastic 3D4 Medical Complete Anatomy app. So let's take a look at the thigh then. We'll zoom in and then build up the muscles of the thigh. And we'll start by looking at the most obvious muscle when you see the front of the thigh, which is quadriceps. And quadriceps, as its name suggests, has four heads. Rectus femoris, vastus medialis, vastus lateralis. And then if we take rectus femoris away, we can see there's another head hidden underneath, and that is vastus intermedius. The vasti all attach from the femur, so their origins are on the femur, vastus intermedius on the front surface of the femur. Vastus medialis and vastus lateralis take their origins from the medial and lateral lips of the linear aspera right round the back of the femur. But rectus femoris actually attaches up on the pelvis. It attaches via a reflected head above the acetabulum and via a straight head, it arises from the anterior inferior iliac spine. And then all four components of quadriceps come together to insert into the patella. And part of that tendon passes over the top of the patella and then continues beneath it. But we don't call that the quadriceps tendon anymore, the other side of the patella. So below the patella, we call that the patella ligament. And that then attaches down onto the tibial tuberosity. But really what the patella is, is a very large sesamoid bone. So a bone that is embedded in a tendon. It's embedded in the tendon of quadriceps. So let's have a look at some of the actions of quadriceps. We can click on it and you can see rectus femoris there glowing. Because it crosses the hip joint, it's a flexor of the hip. So it's assisting muscles like iliacus and psoas major to flex the hip. But the main job of quadriceps as a whole is to extend the knee. It's a very powerful knee extensor and you can see it in action here. So starting with the knee flexed and then quadriceps pulls it straight again. We've just got rectus femoris glowing there, but you can see the other parts of quadriceps around it. And quadriceps is supplied by the femoral nerve. What you can see really nicely in this animation as well is the way that the patella slides in front of the femur as well in that patella groove between the two condyles. Now let's spin this thigh around then and have a look at the back of the thigh where we find the hamstring muscles. And we've got three muscles here, biceps femoris, biceps of the thigh, semitendinosus and semimembranosus. Semitendinosus is so called because it has a cord-like tendon which inserts into the tibia. And semimembranosus is called that because higher up in the thigh, it has a very flat tendon. If we move the model around so that we're now looking at the side of it, at the lateral aspect, we can see biceps in more detail. And now we can see why it's called biceps femoris. It has two heads. It has a short head which attaches to that linear aspera, that rough line running vertically down the back of the femur. And then it has a long head which attaches up onto the ischial tuberosity. And that's where semimembranosus and semitendinosus arise as well. So the ischial tuberosity of the pelvis is the origin of all of those hamstring muscles. Looking at the medial side there, we can see semitendinosus and semimembranosus again attaching from the ischial tuberosity. And there's the tendon of semitendinosus inserting into the upper part of the tibia. That's the subcutaneous surface of the tibia just under the skin. And semimembranosus attaches a little higher up to the medial condyle of the tibia. Let's take a look at the actions of the hamstring muscles. I just need to highlight one of them. So I'm highlighting semitendinosus. And you can see that it is going to extend the hip. Again, we have muscles crossing the hip joint, this time at the back. So they're going to help to extend the hip. But their main job is flexion of the knee joint. They are the principal flexors of the knee joint. So there they are in action. There's the extended knee flexing. Moving around to the front of the thigh, I want to look at the medial group of muscles now. In order to get a good view of them, I'm going to pick off vastus lateralis and vastus intermedius. Might as well take vastus medialis away as well. And what we can see now very clearly is this medial group of 
adductors. There is adductor longus most anteriorly, then behind it adductor brevis, and then finally, last but not least at all, the largest one, adductor magnus, huge great muscle. Adductors longus and brevis originate from the body of the pubic bone and adductor magnus originates from the ischiopubic ramus all the way down to the ischial tuberosity. So the lowest part of it we talk about as the hamstring component of adductor magnus and those fibres pass directly down and end up being a cord-like tendon inserting into the adductor tubercle of the femur just above the medial condyle. The rest of the muscle is fanning up and attaching into the linear aspera on the back of the femur, just like adductor longus and brevis do. While we're looking at that main group of adductor muscles in the thigh, just notice pectineus up there, which attaches from the pectineal line on the pubis down to the medial femur just below the lesser trochanter, and that's an adductor as well. Lying medially to adductor magnus, there's this long skinny muscle with the wonderful name gracilis, and it is a very gracile, slender muscle. That originates from the inferior ramus of the pubic bone. You can see gracilis quite nicely there, so it flows down to attach onto the medial surface of the tibia. So unlike the other adductors, it's crossing the knee joint as well. Let's have a look at the adductors in action. I'm just highlighting adductor magnus. And there they are, the hip is abducted out to the side and then the adductors, the adductors, do their work pulling that thigh back in again, adducting it. And you can see adductor magnus glowing as it pulls that femur back in. You might have noticed what looks like a hole in adductor magnus. There is a hole, it's called the adductor hiatus. And this is how the femoral artery leaves the anterior compartment of the thigh. The artery passes through that hole. By the time it's passed through that hole, it's become the popliteal artery and runs down the back of the knee joint. There are a series of other little holes as well for the perforating arteries that come off the femoral artery. Putting all the muscles back on again, there's one we haven't mentioned yet, and it's this one that crosses diagonally across the thigh. It's called sartorius muscle. That attaches from the anterior superior iliac spine, goes right across the thigh and inserts onto the medial tibia. Let's have a look at the actions of this muscle. It can act as an abductor of the thigh. So it will be acting with muscles like tensor fascia lata, which we can see in this image, and also gluteus medius and minimus, of course, other abductors of the hip. Let's have a look at another action. Here it is. So it's going to flex the hip joint and also flex the knee joint. So it performs quite a complex range of actions. If you put them together, the abduction of the hip, the flexion of the hip and the flexion of the knee, that's basically putting your leg into a cross-legged position. And apparently in olden times, tailors sat cross-legged on the floor. So sartorius is the sartorial muscle, the tailor's muscle that draws your thigh, your hip and your knee into that cross-legged position. I just want to take a closer look at that insertion of sartorius onto the medial tibia because there's gracilis just behind it and there's semitendinosus. So there's a muscle from each compartment of the thigh, the anterior compartment, sartorius, the medial compartment, the adductor compartment, gracilis, and from that posterior compartment containing the hamstrings, the flexors at the back, there's semitendinosus. And these three tendons all converge on practically the same spot on the medial tibia. You can see them lying really close against each other just here as they reach their insertion. And their insertion has a curious name, pes anserinus. It means the goose's foot. Because when you dissect those tendons out and you pull them apart, it looks a bit like a webbed goose's foot. Now there's a little bursa tucked underneath those tendons to help lubricate their movement a bit. And this triple insertion can be a site of inflammation in quite a rare athletic injury. But it's an important one to know about because you might suspect that actually the pain is coming from the knee joint when actually it's coming from these three tendons, which are really important in resisting bending stresses on the knee on that medial side. So there they are, sartorius, gracilis, semitendinosus. Spinning around and zooming back out, now I want to look at a cross section. 
So I'm cutting away the muscles do it really quickly. And now we can tip that thigh and have a look at the cross section there about mid thigh. And we can outline the various muscles in each of the compartments. So here are the various parts of quadriceps muscle and sartorius in the anterior compartment. Then we have the adductors, including gracilis medially. And at the back there, you've got the three hamstring muscles. So those are the three muscular compartments of the thigh. The muscles in each of those compartments are supplied by a different nerve. In the anterior compartment, it's the femoral nerve. In the medial compartment, it's the obturator nerve. And in the posterior compartment, it's the tibial component of the sciatic nerve. And all of those muscles are bound up in fascia. There's the deep fascia, which wraps around all of the muscles of the thigh. That's called fascia lata. And then there are intermuscular septa dividing up those compartments. So a medial intermuscular septum dividing the anterior group from the adductors, a posterior intermuscular septum dividing the adductors away from the hamstrings, a lateral intermuscular septum dividing that anterior group from the hamstrings. So that's all the muscles of the thigh neatly packaged up. Next time, the knee. If you've liked this video, if you found it useful, please like, please share, please subscribe to my YouTube channel and I'll be back with more Lockdown Anatomy very soon. Thank you for watching.